Here's your chance, do your dance at the Space Jam. All right. Hello and welcome to this episode of Ram Center. I'm your co-host, James Jackson, and I'm joined once again by my man, Spencer McCurcher, filling in for Cheyenne. Thank you for coming in today, Thanks, man. Glad, glad I could. You look great. Glad you look good. great. Hey, thanks. Excited? Man, the new purple shirt. Yeah, very excited. Mm -hmm. glad, to, glad to do this again with you. Know. It's the best. It's always, always a fun time. Always. Let's always. get right into it. Our Lady Rams basketball team opened up with back-to-back -back home games this past weekend. After taking home a win against Gannon University on Friday, the ladies fell short to Clarion on Saturday afternoon, 67-58. It was a tough shooting day for Westchester, as they only shot 35% from the field on Saturday, including going only 2 from 19 from three-point range. Clarion also struggled shooting from the field, but their difference? They were able to knock down seven three-pointers to help them pull, pull away with a victory. Leading the way for Clarion was Tyra Polite who put up 20 points, three assists, and contributed four steals. Westchester's leading scorer was Madison Torreson with 15, and she also contributed three steals on the defensive end. After a one and one start overall and 0-1 start in the PSAC, the Lady Rams head to their first road game against Slippery Rock on December 3rd. So two games starting off the weekend for the men's and women's. Right. Uh, men's were able to get two wins. Good. Women, women, you know, drop one, but early in the season. Way early, man. First, yeah. first PSAC game, so hopefully they can get back on track as they go to, to, go to Slippery Rock. Exactly, and we're a young team. We're mm -hmm. a very young team, you mm -hmm. know. I think we'll, we'll have time to develop as the season goes on. Our men's team is also pretty young, Yes. You know? so I think both, both teams times. lost very key seniors exactly. last year. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think they'll be okay going forward, mm -hmm. you know. Having one win under the belt for the first game of the season also very Needed good. It. Needed it very mm -hmm. bad. But you know, now I'll switch gears to our ladies Rams soccer team. Unfortunately, the historic Lady Rams season has come to an end after dropping the NCAA Atlantic Regional Final to Cutstown 3-2. Westchester held a 2-0 lead over the Bears for the most of the first half until the 42nd minute when Cutstown cut the lead in half. Cutstown then came out of the halftime and virtually had control of the match, scoring three unanswered goals in a span of about 16 minutes. Scarlett Walsh, who was named PSAC Player of the Year, registered Westchester's first goal in the 16th minute and fellow senior Haley Manjaruga found the back of the net in the 32nd minute. Westchester finishes with an undefeated season and the most wins since 2009 with 19. Coach Betty Ann Kempf Townsley earned PSAC Women's Soccer Coach of the Year for the second time in her 10-year career as coach, and goalkeeper Alexis Sorolis found herself in the Westchester record books twice as she records the most career wins and shutouts for a keeper in her college career. Congrats on the great season, ladies. Unbelievable, man. You know, I think we, we can't take away with them losing in mm -hmm. a tournament on a great season. You know, we're finally getting nationally recognized. We're third in the country for most of the season. Mm -hmm. Going undefeated is very special. And, and something that not many teams, virtually no teams, mm -hmm. are going to be able to say in, the, you know, in, in years to come. Exactly. Um, you know, just, just not having an NCAA championship doesn't mean you didn't have a successful season. Exactly. They had a very successful season. A lot to learn from, a lot to build off of, right. and I only anticipate good things to come. And, we're, and that's also a young team, you know. We'll, we'll be back. I think we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing to hold your head on, lady. Keep your, keep your heads up. Heck of a season. Now let's throw it over to Sean for the Stay in Sports. On this day in sports in 1972, the Pittsburgh Penguins set the NHL record for scoring the fastest five goals in two minutes and seven seconds. The reigning Stanley Cup champions currently sit at second place in the Eastern Conference behind the New York Rangers. Now over to Makaya with Beyond the Locker Room. Hey Rams, I'm Makaya Waller with Beyond the Locker Room. Here with us in the studio today, we have Pat Moriarty, who plays quarterback on the football team. An interesting fact about Pat is that he has three little sisters. How old are they? Yeah, um, Audrey is 14, Bridget is 14, and Ava is 12. So. Wow, so they're much younger than you. Yeah, they're hitting them teenage years, and it's a Perfect bit of a years. struggle. No, <laughs> no, not at all. So, Pat, what year are you, and where are you from? I'm currently a junior here at Westchester, um, originally from South Jersey. Um, and then for high school, I moved out to Pennsylvania, so now I live in uh, Lower Marion. How far is that commute? Commute's probably like 35 minutes. 35 oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, not bad at all. No. Mm -hmm. What's your biggest athletic accomplishment in your Westchester career here, and why? It would have to be probably leading our team to the Peace Act East Championship wow. my sophomore year. Yeah, it was my first year starting, so we kind of did some things that 
weren't expected of us, and uh, we came out there and surprised a lot of people. That's great. Congratulations yeah, on that. Make you. sure you keep that up for next season. Yeah, for sure. for sure. So outside of football, what are some of the things that you like to do in your spare time? Just be a normal kid, I guess. Just watch movies, listen to music, hang out with friends, go out in town, just be a normal kid. Yeah. What are your favorite movies to watch? Do you like watch Netflix or do you like to watch stuff like on TV, like on demand? Uh, a little bit of both. Netflix. Um, I used to watch Sons of Anarchy a lot. Um, then like obviously the old shows like Fr Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Love Entourage. Fresh Prince yeah. of Bel Air. I don't know who anybody who doesn't, but um, something like that. And then usually I'm watching football as well. ESPN. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Like, can't, can't can't get away from it. So who's your greatest inspiration and why? Greatest inspiration would probably have to be my parents. Um, neither of them went to college, so I'm kind of like the first in the family to go. And they're just blue collar people trying to work hard. So, I mean, they're setting me up for opportunities to have my kids. So I can't say enough about them. I can definitely relate to that. I would mm -hmm. say my inspirations are my parents as well, because like you said, I am the first in my family to go to college. So I can definitely relate to you when you say that, when parents mm -hmm. are such a great insp inspiration in our lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. So since your season is successfully over now, what was your favorite memory of this season? Well, this season would probably have to be the Shippensburg game. Um, I live with three other football players. So um, that was like one of the first times this season that all of us were in and playing together and we all actually scored touchdowns that game so wow. yeah so the 647 Mad Lake house was pretty lit up that was the sure. place to be this yeah, semester it definitely was definitely was congratulations on yeah, that yeah thank you thank you so much Pat for sharing a part of your life with the Ram Center well that's all the time I have for you today for Beyond the Locker Room again I'm Makaya Waller and make sure to stay tuned to Ram Center each week to see who the next athlete we will get to know beyond the locker room. Stay Golden Rams. Now over to Marcellus for By the Numbers. What's going on Rams and welcome back to By the Numbers. My name is Marcellus Cancel Jones and this week I will be throwing it back to football. The receiver position has become much more advanced in the past decade with players making tremendous highlight plays getting the ball in the end zone. There are so many to choose from, but two standouts that come to my mind are Cincinnati Bengals wideout A.J. Green and Atlanta Falcons wideout Julio Jones. Let's see how these two compare when it comes to getting the ball in the end zone. A.J. Green has shown greatness in the NFL as his time started in the NFL. He had a tremendous season back in 2013 where he had his so far career best 98 catches for 1,426 yards and 11 touchdowns. This season, as of November 20th, he has 66 catches for 964 yards and four touchdowns. Unfortunately, Green got Carter off the field Sunday and is expected to miss at least four weeks. Julio Jones has been making a lot of noise in Atlanta, putting the league on notice with his amazing skills. Just last season, he dominated with the so far career best 136 catches for 1,871 yards and eight touchdowns. Amazing to say the least. As we look into this season, as of November 20th, he has 61 catches for 1,105 yards and five touchdowns. Well, that's all the time I have for this week's edition of By the Numbers. Make sure to stay tuned for the next episode of Ram Center. And my name is Marcellus, and now to Samara with her pro sports segment. Samara? Thank you, Marcellus. I'm very excited today. I have Spencer here with me in the studio. Hey, how's it going? All good. I'm really excited to talk to you. Yes. Four weeks into the NBA season. Right. What you thinking so far? Crazy. It's been kind of kind of out of the ordinary, you know? Yeah, definitely. And you got Joel Embiid having a heck of a season, living up to the expectations, even oh, playing limited minutes. Yeah, monstrous. Potential rookie of the year. Definitely, definitely. And then that's the thing. And then you got the young Timberwolves team not really developing as much as they should, but Carl Anthony Towns playing out of his mind. Carl Anthony Towns is putting up insane numbers. Crazy numbers. And I'm really excited to see what Chris Dunn has to do. Yes. Obviously, he's getting more playing time now with Finally. Ricky Rubio being injured. Hasn't necessarily capitalized, right. but, you know, seeing him in college... He was one of the players that was deemed the most NBA ready. Exactly, so, and playing at a lower level school in Providence, exactly. you know, not getting that much exposure to everything mm -hmm. like that, and then having a big tournament, having a big, big East tournament and big season, and it helped him a lot. 
I'll tell you what, a man that we need to be worried about is DeMar DeRozan. Having oh, yeah. Having crazy numbers. You know, he joined Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, and Kareem as the only players to score 30-plus points in the first nine games of the oh, season. Oh, yeah. Crazy. And, I, you know, I'm proud for DeMar. You know, he's finally embracing that role as a superstar in Toronto, mm -hmm. and he, he deserves that. He deserves that. James Harden as well. Oh, James Harden is Again, putting up insane numbers. Absolutely. You know, you switch, you switch him to the point guard position. D'Antoni said, okay, we're going to throw you in the point guard position. Mm -hmm. and his numbers, and that's the thing, the Rockets are playing well. Yeah. You know, even with, like, got rid of Dwight. Yeah, without stuff. Dwight Howard, who's also excelling in Atlanta. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I think I think the Rockets are going to be okay. They could make the playoffs. Team. And I'll yeah. tell you, again, the Lakers, very, very young team. But young team. surprising a lot of people. Oh, yeah. You know, they have a veteran bench. And that's helping them a lot and helping mm -hmm. these young players develop. And Ingram even coming off the bench, too, I like that. Mm -hmm. rather have him start and stuff. Yeah, a lot of these younger players on the Lakers right. got to experience what it's like to play with Kobe as exactly. well. So just like the Timberwolves, where Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns and Zach Levine got to play um, under Kevin Garnett and right. get that kind of you know, experience and, and learn from that veteran, these young Lakers had Kobe Bryant to kind of shape them and kind of show them the reins of the NBA. Exactly, exactly. And that's the th and we've, we've talked about it. And, you know, the Sixers, that's what their problem was. They never had that veteran right. presence. Mm -hmm. They so, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to excruciate everything, give everything your all. And, you know, it's just always young. So right. finally, you know, they got some, Joe Henderson, maybe a veteran player, you mm -hmm. know, trying to get them back involved. But, yeah. It's been a crazy season so far, and I'm excited to see it get into Christmas, you know, everything's oh, yeah. starting to finally come together and see mm -hmm. who's real, who's not. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these teams kind of just have one superstar at this point. Right. Obviously, we saw with the Thunder, they, crazy. you know, it's Russell Westbrook's show now. Right. Kevin Durant is with the Warriors, which yeah. is one of the only teams that has a few big names. Exactly, you, you know? know, and they've surprised some people too, not playing as well. I mean, they already have two losses in the season. Almost. Yeah. I guess, I think it's two, yeah. And yeah. It's just been tough. It's been tough for them to finally, and I think though, and I've, I've talked to uh, James obviously, yeah. and stuff, it's, it's, they're going to finally click. They're going to get in their actually. groove. Exactly. Steph Curry was pretty quiet against the Celtics the other night. Right, right. But, you know, the Celtics have done a pretty good job in shutting down the Warriors. Exactly. They even, you know, they almost came back to, you know, surprise them at the end there on right. Friday night. Well, that's, so, going back, I think the player that we all are very intrigued about, not only us, but the entire league and the entire country, Russell Westbrook. Oh, absolutely. And, and we all expected it. Oh, yeah. We all expected it. I think everyone knew, okay, now this is his team. He has Oladipo, but, I mean, Oladipo right. is just kind of there, mm -hmm. you know. And he's putting up crazy numbers. Insane yeah, numbers. he's averaging, I think, almost 32 points per game, crazy. nine um, rebounds per game, and like te 10 assists per game. Right, and so he's averaging almost a triple-double per game. Five or six games with a triple-double. And, and putting, making history. Exactly. And, you know, they got rid of Serge Ibaka as well. So even though, you know, he's been playing with an... Kevin Durant has been injured, and right. he kind of had to take the team by the horns exactly. last season. Now this is legitimately his team, Finally. and he's able to, you know, take all the shots. Exactly. Because obviously he's put up, like, 40 shots in some it's games. Crazy. And people were like, what are you doing that for if you have Durant? But now, without you know, Durant, what else are you going to do? Exactly. Yeah. He needs to, especially, like you said, without Serge. I mean, they have all these young big men now, but they're not going to perform. They're not going to put up. 15 a game, 16 a game, you know, so you need, you need Russ to step up, and I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, you know, I'm very oh, happy yeah. he's doing it, mm -hmm. because he deserves it, he deserves the credit ever since he came into the league of being a superstar, and, and, and it's awesome, I'm so glad for him. Right, so potential MVP candidate there, Absolutely. we'll have to see how the season goes, for sure. For sure. but that is all the time that we have for this pro sports discussion, thank you so much hey, for, for joining me, I had awesome. a blast, me too. Um, we'll have to do it again sometime. yeah, we'll have to see how the season unfolds, sounds and we'll good. definitely talk back again, that sounds good. Once again, I'm Samara Rosenfeld, and this is Spencer McKercher. Now let's go back to the studio. Thank you, Samara, and you too, Spence. Chopping up with Samara about Thanks, basketball. Man. How about Russell Westbrook in the beginning of the season? Crazy numbers, you know, averaging almost a triple double. He's had five so far in mm -hmm. the season. It's crazy number, but what? Can we, we expected it. Can we say we didn't expect it? We though. expected. We, we talked about it a lot. Durant times. leaves. It's his team. You know, that's all. That's mm -hmm. all. Him. But I'm also noticing James Harden in the beginning of the season. Underrated, very dark horse candidate for MVP. The Is numbers he the, he's putting up, and the Rockets. He's making the Rockets better. Is he the best point guard in the NBA? Yeah. No, no. We know who that is, and he plays on the Clippers, the best team in the NBA. Twelve and two right now. We'll, we'll see in June. We'll see you in June. Well, hey, that's all the time we have for this episode. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Instagram at WCU Ram Center and also like our Facebook page. As always, I'm your co-host Spencer McKercher. And I'm James Jackson. Stay golden Thumb C and happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you again after break. Welcome to